to Jacob's Well. We are so glad that you are with us, both out in social media and those who are in the house. Praise God. It is a wonderful time to come together in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and King. And we pray that as, you, as you're with us through the program, that you will sing with us and meditate on the name of Jesus, hearing the message, taking it into your heart, and being able to live by it through the week. Again, we welcome you. We're glad to have you with us. And if there are those that you would, we invite you to uh, bring, bring people with you. Let people know what you're watching tonight, mm. that you are at the well. And at the well, you get filled. Amen. 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 Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. We bless your name tonight, Lord. We glorify you. We exalt you because you are good. You are worthy. You are powerful. You are loving. And we thank you for all that you have invested in us. We thank you for being here with us. We thank you for being in us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come thanking you for his for his powerful blood that he shed for us thanking you for forgiveness for the sins that we have committed both known and unknown father we pray for those tonight who are sick and afflicted who have diseases as covid has taken over and some of the other things and even just the regular stuff that we deal with lord the MS and the cancer. It is horrible. And we lift it up to you. And those, Father, who are sick, you know who they are, Father. We thank you for them. And we know that you have the power to heal. And we ask that your will be done in all of our lives. Father, we pray for those who are listening tonight who may be far away from you, who may have been with you at one time and have for some reason got further and further away i know how that is that emptiness that sets in i pray father that they will come back that your children will come back to you come back to love come back to righteousness and those who have never known you father that they will hear something within the message tonight the music tonight that your Holy Spirit will touch your heart and say, it's time. You are loved. You are clean. You are forgiven. And so, Father, we turn this over to you again. Let the words of our mouth and all that we sing, all that we say, be acceptable to you in all ways. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. He calls me 
by the thunder the trumpet sounds within my soul I ain't got long to stay here oh still away still away oh still away to Jesus still away oh still away oh, oh I ain't got long to stay Sounds within of my soul. I ain't got long to stay here. Still away, still away, still away, Jesus. stay here right now we're having our scripture and it comes from Psalm 118 if you have your Bibles please join us my heart is steadfast O God my heart is steadfast I will sing and make melody awake my soul awake O harp and lyre I will awake the dawn I will give thanks to thee, O Lord, among the peoples. I will sing praises to thee among the nations. For thy steadfast love is great above the heavens. Thy faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let thy glory be all over the earth, that thy beloved may be delivered. Give help by thy right hand and answer me. God has promised in his sanctuary with exaltation, I will divide up Shechem and portion out the vale of Sukkot. Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah my scepter, Moab is my wash basin. Upon Edom I cast my shoes, over Philistia I shout in triumph. Who will bring me to the fortified city? Who will lead me to Edom? Hast thou not rejected us, O God? Thou dost not go forth, O God, with our, in with our armies. O grant us help against the foe, for vain is the help of man. With God we shall do valiantly. It is he who will tread down our foes. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his holy word. We thank God for Pastor Jay and for uh, Minister Jacqueline and their ministry to us. And for a few moments today, I want to speak from Psalms 108. And I want to ask a question for all of us to take into serious co consideration. And the question is simply this. Is your heart right with God? Introspectively speaking, 
Is your heart right with God? In Psalms 108, King David is facing a military battle that, was, that is going to come up in the near future. But he had learned from his lifelong relationship with God. What he had learned was to honor God and to worship God and to give God praise and thanksgiving for who God is and what God was about to do in the future. And when David praised God, he, he did it with great passion. David did it with great passion. He had such, such passion when it came to praising God that when the Ark of the Temple had been brought back to uh, Jerusalem, the Bible says that he danced and danced and shouted and danced and danced his way out of his royal garment. And his wife got really upset with him because it was absurd for the king to perform that way and to take off his clothes and, and reveal his undergarments in the public. But that's how David was. He had that kind of compassion, uh, that kind of passion. David had that kind of passion for serving and celebrating God. And David was known for being a musician. He was a musician. He could play the harp. He could play the lyre. And he made great music and praise unto the Lord. As a matter of fact, he was so proficient with his musical gift he, well, let me say it this way. Every praise was to our God. Every praise. When he would play the harp or the lyre, it was every praise was to our God. And he did it with great excellence. And he made people feel so good. And the reason why he was able to do that was because his heart was fixed and his mind was made up to honor God with everything he had. And he didn't have any problem letting the world know about it. Look at verses, if you have your Bibles, verses 1 through 6 of Psalms 108. And this is what David said. He said, my heart is steadfast. Is your heart steadfast? My heart is steadfast, O oh God. I will sing and make melody with all of my being. Awake, O oh harp and lyre. I will awake the dawn. I mean, his praise was so awesome. He was going to be praising when the night was over and the dawn would appear. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, among the people. I will sing praises to you among the nations, for your steadfast love is great above the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory, let your glory be over all the earth, that your beloved ones may be delivered. Give salvation by your right hand and answer me. Now, he, he made that, that, that praise, that proclamation before a multitude of people. My heart is fixed. I'm going to praise the Lord. Now, here's, here's, here's what's interesting. The reason why David could pray this prayer before all of the people was because he had personal history with God. We all know that. He had a personal history with God, and this history took place in the time of victory, in the time of sorrow, in the time of tragedy, in the times of his sin, in the times when he was dwelling in iniquity. He knew 
the judgments of God. He knew the judgments of God and he also knew the favor of God. David had a way of communicating with God through prayers and lament and repentance and worship and praise because of his walk with God. He knew. He knew. He could trust God in every situation. He could hold on to God's unchanging hand and stand on the promises of God. My question is to all of us, is our heart right with God to the point that we can give exuberant praise unto the Lord and that our confidence in the Lord is such that no matter what condition we find ourselves in, we are able to praise God and give him thanksgiving and honor him for who he is and for what he has done. Even in the most darkest times of our life, even when we find ourselves slipping into darkness, can you still cry out, and bring praises to the Lord. This is what he said about his confidence in God and the promises of God. Verse 7 through 9, it says, God has promised in his holiness with exaltation, I will divide up Shechem and portions out of the valley of Sukkoth, Gilead is mine, Manasseh is mine, Ephraim is my helmet, Judah is my scepter, Moab is my wash basin, upon Edom I cast my shoe over Philistia. I shout in triumph. David had great confidence in the word of God and what God would do for him and how God would protect his nation and defend him from his enemies. In this case, Philistia. The life lesson for us to carry away from this is that when our hearts are fixed and our minds are made up to give God honor and praise in the moments of turmoil, turmoil that takes place in our mind and our body, when we have turmoil in our faith walk or with others, we too, like David, will find peace during the storm and become peace in the storm in the presence of others. You heard that? We would have peace ourselves. But not only will we have peace ourselves when other people are troubled and in the storm, we can be peace in their presence as they struggle. Now, I understand that most Christians will say, well, you, you, you're preaching to the, to the crowd. Uh, uh, we understand this. We know this. And, 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 and that may be very well true. But if you tell me that there are no times in your faith walk that you kind of lose it. If you tell me you go day by day and you don't have any doubt, you don't have any trouble, you don't have any weariness. You tell me that the devil is not attacking you and putting doubt and fear in your mind. I don't know if you would really be telling the truth. But I do understand that when that happens, whether you want somebody to know it or not, if you have that peace and that confidence in God to praise him and say hallelujah in the midst of the storm, you will discover that God will be with you in every situation. But, but before, before David could do these things, before he could really give God the praise and the glory in the midst of his own trials and tribulations. Before he really could do it, he had to mature in his faith. David had to learn the value of renewing his heart because of sin and iniquity in his life. Let me give you an example. During that year and a half where he was shacking up with Bathsheba, not paying attention to anything but himself and what he wanted, 
The prophet Nathan had to come to him and tell him a little story about a man that did somebody really wrong. And David got indignant and said, that man ought to be killed. And Nathan said, but thou art the man. And the Bible says, he kind of like woke up and realized what he had done and the severity of it. And perhaps he already knew that, but when the prophet of the Lord came and pointed it out to him, he was convicted and dressed in sackcloth sath cloth and ashes and went through a whole period of the renewing of his heart. Sometimes when we catch ourselves in our own mess or someone else points out our mess to us. And we realize that even though we think that we're doing well in the Lord, that we're being righteous, that we're being holy and we're being loving. But yet there's something in our mind, something deep down in the nook and crannies of our existence that is so ugly that someone brings it out to us. We must be able to say, Lord, I repent. I am heartily sorry of these misdoings. Lord, they're grievous to me. Have mercy upon us, upon me. Whenever we come to the point where we realize that we're just not what we think we are, that we struggle the way we do, we get angry, we, get, we, we say, you know what? When we say really wicked things in our minds and have wicked imagination. See, nobody knows when you go through those changes, but you know and God know what's up on the inside of you. And when you are convicted, then you say, Father, I stretch my hands to thee. Cleanse me, mold me, make me. That's a renewing of the heart, a renewing of the mind. And when the Lord lets you know it's going to be all right, you might have to pay some consequences. David played a, paid a number of consequences, but he took the responsibility and the consequences that God gave him. And he continued to stand in thanksgiving. He chastised me. He loved me. He restored with me, restored me. He cleansed me with hyssop and washed me whiter than snow. Lord, I thank you. And see, when you get down deep in the depths of your own issues and your own problems, when you get deep down in there and love lifts you up and carries you out and still shows you grace, mercy and favor, you can only say, Lord, I praise you. Lord, I lift my hands to you. Lord, I was in the depths of all kind of despair and all other kind of ugliness, yet your love lifted me when nothing else could help. Your love lifted me, and so I got to say, thank you, Lord. I got to say, hallelujah. I thank you, Lord, for being so good. I praise you. I worship you. I love you. I adore you. And then all of a sudden you see the enemy coming up on you on the horizon. And you see trouble is coming your way. But you don't despair. You say, Lord, you did it for me before. But this time I'm trusting you all the way. I'm holding on to your unchanging hand. I know that you will deliver me. Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do. And you begin to praise. That's what David did. He praised in spite of the future that was coming at him in war. My brothers and sisters, when we contend with sin and when we minister to others who are dealing with sin, sin, sin could be categorized in three ways. Disobedience, to God, injustice to others, and a personal rebellion against the things of God. And a lot of times we think about those things, we think about these big problems and these big sinners and all of this. But the devil has a way of speaking in our mind and just telling us something really simple and 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 he deceives us just like he did eve and and say do this it'll be okay and he'll tell you to be this 
obedient for it will be all right. He, he, he will tell you, you know, that person did you wrong. You need to do them wrong. You, 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 you don't need to live by the rule that says do unto others as you would have them do unto you. You could live by the law. I will treat people the way they treat me. And it'll sound like it's a good thing to do. But deep down inside, it is something foul and ugly. And then you could be rebellious against God. I don't need God. I've got my own money. I got my own clout. I've got my own position in society. I don't need God. And people who worship God, there's something wrong with them because all they need to do is just bend down and pull themselves up by the bootstraps and they'll be all right. That, that's a form of rebellion and people think that way. I don't need God to do what I can do for myself. You know, it all boils down to the pride of life, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes that lead to covetousness. And that's what sin is. But iniquity is when you live in that mess. Iniquity is that you dwell in your sin, no matter how small and secretive it is. You stay right there. Nobody knows about it, but you're right there. You live with it. It becomes a part of your character. And don't you understand that eventually it becomes your character, that sinful nature in you. People will begin to know, yeah, yeah that person ain't nothing but a liar. That person ain't nothing but a whoremonger. That person is, an, is nothing but a peace breaker. And, and, and it becomes a part of you, who you are. And that's what iniquity is. But the Lord will deliver us from our sin <clears throat> and he will deliver us from our iniquities. My brothers and sisters, the question is, is your heart right with the Lord? I'm reminded of a song that we used to sing back in the day. <clears throat> and it says, give me a clean heart so I may serve thee. Give me a clean heart so I may be used by thee. We used to sing that back in the day quite a bit, but we don't hear that as much as we did back in the day. Lord, give me a clean heart. And then the reason why we need a clean heart is because the heart is the center of our souls. You know, folks spend a lot of money. I was looking up, looking it up, and, and, and a lot of money and effort is invested in cardiovascular care. But if we would just put a little more in the spiritual condition of our heart, by going to God in prayer and, 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 and fasting and praying and loving and, and letting the Lord cleanse your heart, creating me a clean heart, renew the right spirit within me, our hearts will become healthier and healthier and healthier and will grow stronger and wiser in the Lord because our con the condition of our hearts okay, is okay. Proverbs 4.23 says, Tell us above all else, guard your heart for everything you do flows from it. Lord, I thank you for my heart. And I thank you that even though sometimes my heart is fragile, I thank you, Lord, that you can touch my heart and make me whole. And that when you do that, any of that mess that's all up in my gut, whether it's the physical gut or the spiritual gut, I know that you'll cleanse me and make me whole. Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I can have a great heart. My brothers and sisters, it is my prayer that whatever condition your heart is in, that you will have a made up mind to praise God and worship him and grow in grace and mature in faith 
and allow him to cleanse you from all unrighteousness so that your light might shine and you will be filled with the peace of God. But the peace of God in you will bless others who struggle with their heart condition. This is the word of God for the people of God. Won't you lift your hands in the house and in the social media and say, thanks be to God. Amen, amen, amen.